I know that this is predominantly a Camaro channel. I get it, I know. But this is big news because we have a new drop from McLaren. Uh, a couple weeks late to the party, but now we have more information. 750S, this is gonna be replaced in the 720S. This is big because it's gonna be the final flagship that's all gas. McLaren, definitely one of the last, last few uh, which are stepping to the party, bringing us an all gas model. So I think it definitely deserves to be talked about. Um, and I'm gonna praise him for it. It's really not as exciting as you would hope it would be, but uh, we got a pretty good picture of what's gonna be coming. So basically one last gas raw. Uh, I'll take it, man. I think that's a victory to me in my book, but. I'll make myself as small as possible because the definition on StreamYard sucks. Here we go. McLaren 720S, what comes next? So they talk about this, these articles kind of came out and I'll show you the next one here in just a little bit, but that one came out first, then this one, January 9th. So it, it pretty much goes on to say that 720S is dead. They stopped making them last month. Uh, pretty much once they stop, you know, everybody's putting their money down for what's coming next because they kind of know, you know, McLaren, uh, I'm assuming McLaren, you know, the few people I've had exposure talking to, uh, it's about a handful. They either, they're all about the McLaren or it's a love paint kind of thing. So I hear they break a lot. Um, and then I hear that they don't. So I'm assuming that this is like a model to model basis on what you buy. Uh, some of them say they're very, very dependable. And other people say that they break all the time. I've heard they fight you on, on warranty repairs. Uh, the materials which they use to build their cars with are okay. Um, but I, you know, it's kind of like reading, you know, Amazon reviews. You kind of get a, a little hodgepodge of everything. Cause it, it, like I said, it's a love hate thing. So. I'm assuming if you hate it, you're going to go way out of your way to uh, push that emotion off on somebody else. Um, but I don't know. Maybe one day I'll, I'll, I'll venture out and get my own. But until then, I just have to go over what people tell me. The 720S pretty much came to an end. And I'll leave this article up so you can uh, pause it, read it, whatever you want to do. Um, but it goes on to say 720S came in. Uh, 2017 it's a pretty short run so they stopped making them last month literally like the beginning of 23 so that put it at like a five-year run uh, they're I I'm assuming they're going to deliver the orders up until they say they stopped taking orders for them but I'm assuming they have orders in production right now they're gonna be delivering them throughout 23 let's get into that article it says they're taking orders I'm assuming now for the 750s taking deposits I mean I'm sorry 750s is a supplement to the 720s 30 more horsepower all gas I'm excited for this actually there's a few key points here I, want, I want to talk on uh, it says the new vehicle internally named 750S will carry over the 720S. <laughs> no surprise. It's going to be using the same 4 liter twin turbo V8. Uh, and anybody that knows, if this thing's a 750S, I'll bet you it's probably 750 to the tire. Because we all know how crazy the 765 was. Uh, talked to a few people. Um, from what I've heard, that car is pretty gnarly. And... Uh, but they bolted the engine and everything directly to the chassis. And that with it being a carbon fiber monocoque, you know, all one piece, I'm assuming the vibrations and everything were just, tr <laughs> there's no sound deadening, no harmonic control. It's all basically as light and as fast as the car could possibly be. So, um, yeah, I'd imagine that this that goes on to say that this is going to be like a more toned down version of that, but it's going to be more dramatic than the 720S. So maybe it'll have the gearing of the seven, the gear spacing, I mean, of the 765, but uh, you know, a lot of the creature comforts and the chassis makeup of the 720S. So they go on to say 
It's not as extreme as the 765. Uh, 750S will be the last non-electrified -electri mainstream McLaren model. So this is the last all-gas flagship. Yay. The exotic sports car maker said that the future models will be either hybrid or all screwed up. So it says uh, McLaren spokesman declined to comment on future products. I'll just take a minute here and pause so you can pause the screen, read the article if you want. Scroll down here, it says the 750S will be available in coupe and convertible variants right out of the gate at launch, which is unusual for McLaren because usually they launch convertibles two years after the fact. Also gonna be no long tail variants of the car at all. So uh, I'm assuming as far as gas goes, got four long tail variants and then that's it. The pricing is yet to be disclosed. 750S should carry a 10% premium over the 720S, which is, you know, 310.5. The production of the 720S ended last month and accounted for about 30% of McLaren's US sales last year. That's huge. That's huge. Uh, especially in taking into account for that they released that Artur or whatever it is. I still think they screwed up with that one. Uh, I haven't got to drive one, haven't even really been around one, so don't take my word for it, but I'm just taking it at face value on paper. Uh, no bueno, no good. It's definitely gonna be a hard pass for me. They go on to say, and this is the last little bit of it, 720S has a similar wheelbase and wheel offset of the 720S. So is it gonna use the same chassis? I uh, don't know. Which launched five years ago, the source said it features a redesigned front bumper, larger lower intake and side air intake for better cooling, and a more prominent 765 LT style air brake for greater downforce. What I'm taking from this is it's gonna be pretty much just like a refresh, maybe another five year, six year run and done. Inside, the 750S is equipped with all new high definition steering wheel column mounted instrument cluster similar to the Artura and the Elva, which allows the, the driver to adjust the seat position without affecting visibility of key driving information. I've heard a lot of good things about the Artua uh, as far as the, just the way they have the control set up the display let's touch base on these last few article or these last couple sentences here suspension setting and driving mode switches are relocated to the instrument cluster bezel kind of like the r2 where i'm seeing that they're doing everything on the side so it's all focused in one area right there so you can you know do everything by memory and you don't really have to take your eyes off the road it says that the 750s is more customizable out of the gate offering new exterior colors and interior materials and wheel designs that's awesome because uh honestly no car manufacturer out there does colors like mclaren uh, they offer a lot of awesome vibrant uh, they really make use of a lot of pearls micas they just they just create some seriously awesome colors that are factory some of them, you know, it, when you get into the MSO, anything goes in the MSO world, but yeah, as far as factory offerings goes, uh, you know, Napier Green, there, there's a lot, all your volcano colors, there's a lot of really, really cool vibrant colors. So it's gonna be very, very cool to see what uh, McLaren brings to the table. On the color spectrum, other than that, 750S, I'm really excited. I'm happy to see that an auto manufacturer is in 2023 releasing an all gas model. I think that's what a lot of people want. I'm kind of praising this manufacturer because in today's age, there's not a lot of companies that are coming out and putting into production all gas cars. So way to go McLaren. Uh, other than that, if you have questions, drop them below. Till the next one, catch you guys later. Have a good day, we'll see you.